Last time we were talking about the process of absorbing uh, indirect costs or overhead costs uh, into uh, units of production and we looked at this schematic here, this uh, so-called road map where the focus is not so much on direct cost because that's easy. We can attribute direct costs directly to the cost uh, to the unit of product itself. The more complicated uh, process is taking the indirect or overhead costs and getting them um, either allocated or apportioned uh, and ultimately reapportioned and absorbed into the cost unit. And the best way to appreciate that is to look at an example. So if we have a company, for example, that produces fridges and toasters, and here are overhead costs relating to production, 8000 for rent, indirect materials, power and equipment insurance, adding up to $15,000. One can see here that uh, it's not immediately obvious now what part of this $15,000 should be attributed to or be allocated to or be borne by refrigerators and how much by toasters. In fact, it's impossible based on the level of information given here. We'd have to make numerous assumptions or uh, some investigation inside the company to see how it's organized um, and review or analyze uh, certain types of data. For example, let's say the company has three cost centers, has two production workshops A and B, and one warehouse, which is a service center. And suppose we were to take the rent cost of $8,000 and split it up between the production workshops and the warehouse based on floor space. So here's a basis now, square meters. A is, is occupying 4,000 square meters of the total 8,000 square meters. It looks like 50%. B has 2,500 square meters. And C, the warehouse, 1,500 square meters. One can see now in percentage terms, A should be, this is the production workshop A, should be carrying 50% of the rent costs or $7,500. We can investigate further and we can see that the uh, indirect materials, um, which amounts to $1,500, uh, are specifically um, able to be split up on a specific basis between the three um, cost centers. So that, that was an easy one. That is what we call simply allocating the costs. With the power, we have to apportion the costs again, and we have to find a basis that's considered fair and, and logical. $3,000 uh, worth of of uh, costs, power costs, and if we have uh, on the kilowatt hour basis, we can examine what the consumption is of power in the three departments, then we can split up that number as well. Then this is a process of apportionment. Equipment insurance, um, book value is typically taken for that. So if we have 2,500 um, dollars of costs connected to uh, the equipment insurance. We could look at the uh, equipment which is used in each of the three cost centers and apportion the insurance costs by, by share of book value. And in this way, we can see therefore that the costs will become, uh, will, will, will fall into production, the two production workshops and the warehouse in a manner which is considered to be uh, fair. Now this is this can be done by policy and of course the managers of each of the cost centers will be very careful to review the policy and make sure it works for them or at least is not disadvantageous to, to their um, departmental interest. Now what about the story of reapportionment? Well the reapportionment happens uh, in the following way. We can see here $2,300 of the total has 
wound up in the warehouse C and those costs now have to be transferred over to A and B and we have to find a way to break up the costs. Now we could do this in various ways. It's a question of, uh, of the managers getting together and examining um, in, in what logical way can warehouse C um, costs be split up between A and B. Could it be, for example, on the basis of how much um, space A and B's um, materials use up or how frequently they are making use of drawing materials from warehouse C? Uh, that's the kind of thing which needs to be investigated. There is no one sort of universal answer, one correct answer or uh, it's a principle that applies here. It has to simply be a re reapportionment, which is considered to be fair and accurate, but it shouldn't be too complicated, otherwise it's not worth implementing. So let's assume that we found a uh, reasonable way in which to transfer the 2,300 costs um, between A and B. A taking 1,500 and C um, getting 800 reapportioned to it. Then we have the total overheads now are located between departments, the production departments A and B. Remember, those are the departments through which the units of product are being, production units are traveling. So now we have to do the next step, and that is to do the absorption. You see there are a lot of A's here, allocation, apportionment, reapportionment, absorption. We have to absorb these costs, these overhead costs, into the units that are produced. Now, in an earlier session, we had um, introduced the notion of an overhead absorption rate. In other words, we had discussed the connection between overhead costs and specific uh, individual units of production and how much each individual unit bears in the way of dollar overhead costs. In this particular case here, the assumption we're going to make is the company um, absorbs its such overhead costs on the basis of direct labor hours. And we're going to make a distinction between workshop A and workshop B. We're going to look at how many, what, what's the total labor hours uh, consumed in the two workshops. And that's going to be the basis. It's going to be uh, basically a weighting um, or better said, uh, we're going to make a link between overhead costs absorbed and direct labor hours. And we're going to do it on a workshop-specific basis. So let's just look at A for the moment. If uh, management observes or can make the case that overheads somehow are incurred uh, or, or follow or have some kind of relationship to total labor hours that are spent uh, in that workshop, then we could make a case that the $8,600 of overhead costs would be associated with 1,400 labor hours um, worked. In other words, the overhead absorption rates in this case would be determined by dividing $8,600 dollars by 1,400 labor hours to give us a, uh, a rate for each labor hour of $6.14 of overhead costs. Now that may be a bold assumption, but in fact, uh, traditionally, this is how many companies have um, operated using this kind of um, absorption uh, calculation. For uh, workshop B, you can see 6,400 dollars of overheads divided by 950 labor hours gives us six dollars and 74 cents. Now this is a workshop or a departmental specific overhead absorption rate that we've calculated here. We could take a different approach and we could say let's uh, pool all of the labor hours in the company uh, 1,400 and 950 being equal to 2,350 hours. And let's take the full $15,000 of, of uh, overheads and let's divide the two so that we end up with a factory-wide or company-wide 
overhead absorption rate of six dollars and thirty eight of overheads dollar overheads per labor hour direct labor hour worked that's an alternative way in which we could um, we could tackle this now we could look at um, building a cost card for both refrigerators and for toasters and uh, find a way now to link the overhead costs to those particular products. Uh, the direct materials and direct labor would be um, no problem. We would have the data for that for direct attribution, direct materials, in this case 15 kilograms of materials times two dollars per kilogram is thirty dollars direct labor assuming it takes one hour 75 um, time for direct labor to produce a refrigerator seems quite a lot for that but let's just take that as an, as an example and uh, at fifteen dollars an hour and also variable overheads they go they, they, uh, the more you produce, the, the greater the variable overhead portion you um, generate or, or incur is $5. Here's the fixed overhead absorption, which is calculated as $1.75, sorry, one hour 75 of labor spent on one refrigerator unit at six dollars and thirty eight remember we're calculating the fixed overheads here and we said that the company wide overhead absorption rate was six dollars and thirty eight cents for every labor hour spent so when we produce one refrigerator and consume one hour one and three quarters of an hour, uh, hours of labor the fixed overheads absorbed will be equal to 175 times 6.38 or $11.17 and in this way we have now introduced the fixed overheads on a per unit basis in our cost card it comes up to $11.17 for the toaster similar approach we have the direct materials direct labor and variable overheads it's here at the fixed overheads that we need to um, apply the overhead of uh, the fixed overhead absorption rate which is done on a direct labor basis so when we produce one toaster it requires 20 minutes of work that's 0 0.3 hours at six dollars thirty eight again you can see here's the company-wide overhead absorption rate being applied and that are for one unit of toaster absorbs, uh, according to the cost card, $1.91 of fixed overheads. Now, it's a bit tricky, of course. This requires lots of practice in order to make sure that one structures one's thinking in the, in the right way and is very clear about what we, were, we are aiming at. Remember, we are talking about the process of relating indirect or overhead costs to the unit of production. The direct costs are simple and straightforward, they should be, but the process of allocating, apportioning, reapportioning, and ultimately absorbing uh, requires an investigation and in how, where the costs fall, the indirect costs, uh, across the organization and ultimately being able to link those costs to a unit of product and of course when you have more products uh, a broader product range in the company it becomes uh, has a certain uh, complexity which follows but the basic principles that are discussed here apply so remember the um, absorption uh, costing process is a way of allocating factory overheads per product lines and the key thing is to identify the total factory overheads to be absorbed. That's the, that's the big number, the total dollar amount.
It doesn't increase, it doesn't decrease, you don't eliminate costs, you don't ignore costs, you don't raise, um, increase the costs. That number stays fixed, it just becomes a question of how we split it up among the products. Then it follows a number of steps. This is just in a summary. It looks abstract here. If we say step two, take the total quantity recorded for the absorption base. The absorption base in the example we just talked about was direct labor hours. And therefore, we need to examine what the total quantity of labor hours there are for the whole factory or on a department basis. And hopefully the absorption base will have some correlation with how overhead costs are incurred. And here's some other bases. Machine hours can be used or units of output. Then we have to compute the overhead absorption rate as we did in the previous example. And, and then step four, we figure out the overhead cost per product line. That's multiplying the overhead absorption rate with the absorption base quantity recorded per unit. That would be, for example, the number of direct hours, um, direct labor hours required to produce one unit of output. Again, this is the sort of um, exercise which uh, is best appreciated by running different uh, numerical or practical uh, examples, illustrations, in order to see how the overhead absorption rate operates.